Good morning. I'm wondering now what you're going to do with your day. I mean, what are you going to do with a day like this? Beautiful, little, little bit of breeze in it. What will you do with your day today? What will you do? What's going to happen in your world? Who can you influence today? Who can you make a difference with today? Who can you spread a little sunshine? There's a little song. Spread a little sunshine. So who will you do that with today? Today we all have a great opportunity in front of us that we can make a difference. And thank you for coming. I just love seeing it. Love uh, just being a part of sharing and talking. And it's just great. So I haven't let chicks out today. I've uh, got a little bunch of little crackers out here for them today. So they're going to have a little fun getting crackers. Here they come. Forgot to get the big man out. But uh, it's going to be a pretty day for them today. And uh, got to let everybody out. I fed them, though, but I just didn't let them out. Um, this is a great time for chickens, but I'll tell you, you have to be so careful because it gets so hot and you have to make sure they have water. If those water containers go dry, they will be in a mess. So what, I, what I'm going to do this year is get me a second one. I, I have one watering can, which is great. It's a nice one. But I'm going to get me a second one. And here they come. Come on, girls. All right, so this is great. And ever since I fixed my coop, you know, I lost a, a hen a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I think the varmint got in through the back of this coop right here. I lost Amber Rose. And uh, what I did is I... Uh, I put a screw in the back of it so that it could not bend because I think he, that uh, animal was able to get in there and get my baby. So, can't get in there now. And there's uh, Dusty. Dusty's a Americana. He and his girlfriend produce uh, green eggs. So, and uh, these are all out, and that's Buster. That's Buster. I know usually I don't, I've been doing the Bible study right off the bat and not showing the chickens up front, but I forgot to let them out today. So I just thought maybe I'd show them to you. And uh, you see his head's black. Well, uh, Shaq has been running free range and Shaq comes over here and they fight. So that's what's going on with, with him. He doesn't back off and then Shaq pecks his head and it causes him to have problems with his uh, head. And these are Buff Orpingtons. So they're, they're all the same breed. He's a little bit more orange than they are. And he has their beauties. Listen, today we're going to talk about the soul. What is the soul? You know, you've heard the, the, the body, the soul, and the spirit. So you wonder, what is my soul? You know, if I, how, how do I break that down? So we're going to break that down today. And your body, of course, is what you live in, your body. That's the temple of God, your body. And then you have, go baby, go, go, go. Good boy, that's a good boy. Go ahead, go ahead. And then you have your soul. And uh, basically, in just a basic nutshell, your soul is your personality. Who are you? You know, one day in heaven, the Bible says that we're going to be about doing God's business. And so in heaven, what will you be doing? Well, what's going to be happening in heaven is your soul is going to live on. Your personality and who you are, you're going to live on. Your body will be dead and put into the grave. But your soul and your spirit will live on. So today, we're going to break down what is the soul, how does the soul operate, and what does the soul have to do with us today and in eternity. Now, um, the scripture says this in 1 Thessalonians 5, 23. It says, I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So the Bible tells us here that we are to be blameless. So our, our, and it names all three. It names the spirit, I pray God your whole spirit, your soul, and your body be preserved. So our spirit, our soul, and our body is to be preserved to the coming of the Lord. So that's just going to be really important for us. And so the scripture helps us see that. And so what is our body? Our body is the temple. 
Our body is what we live in. You know, it's what we, the sight, it's what we see. Our body has eyes and it can see. And then we have smell. We have things that bring about smell. And then we have hearing. We hear through our body. And then of course we have the mouth. We taste through our body. And then of course we have our hands, our feet, our body, our neck, you know, our cheeks. Uh, I have a little grandson. And uh, last night I had the opportunity and the pleasure of being with him while mom and daddy took a little time off. And those little cheeks just to put my cup, my hands around those little, that little face and look at it. There is just no pleasure beyond words. It is such a pleasure. So we have the touch, you know, our touch. And I'm sure it was a pleasure to him to have his grandmother just love him and nurture him and just cut my hands around his little face and look at him and laugh with him and tease with him. And it was just as much pleasure for him probably as it was for me as his grandmother to touch and to use and be pleasurable of what God has given us in the way of that. Now then we have our soul. Now some people have called it our psyche and that's where we get our word psychology. You know, you go to a psychologist who can tell you all about your personality. You know, they can tell you that maybe you're an extrovert or an introvert. They can tell you maybe you're intuitive or you're sensing. Maybe the psychologist could tell you that you're a thinking type, which is issue, or a feeling type, which you're very tender and sensitive. Or maybe they could tell you that you are um, a, a judgment person, which means you make a judgment and you stick with it. Or you're a percepting person. You like to leave things option, open options so that you can change your mind from time to time. So your personality is your soul. Who are you? And who are you? Well, you have senses. You have faith. You have a belief system. You know, you get it through your body. You look, you smell, you hear, you taste, you touch. But your personality, you have your faith. What do you believe? And then you have your hope, the hope that you have, things that you're futuristic looking forward to. And then you have reverence. What do you revere? What's important to you? What really do you care about? And then you have your prayer. What do you pray to? What do you call out to? And then, of course, worship. And that's where you really have the depth of your worship, you know. Now, here's the thing. The Spirit of God has to quicken and awaken your personality. If not, you will live in an evil state. In other words, and we talked about this, but once again, you have the wicked and you have those in the Spirit of God. So that's the spirit part of us. We have either God in us or we don't. So you have God the spirit in our in our lives or we have the spirit of wickedness. Now, the if we have God in our lives, what happens to our personality? Well, we have great faith in what? God. We have God's faith. If we do not have God, our personality is going to lend itself in, in faith toward things that are in, inappropriate. And then, if we have God, what will our hope be in? Our hope will be eternal. We'll have an, an eternal hope. That's what our personality will bring about. Things that we do, things that we seek, things that we look forward to, we will have uh, hope in. And then, if we have the Spirit of God, what will we revere? We revere God. We will revere him. We will hold to him. We will hold fast to him. We will have reverence for God. If we don't have the spirit of God, then what will happen to us is we will revere things that are ugly, things that are dirty, things that are unseemly. So those are the important things there. If we have the spirit of God, our personality will draw toward praying to God. We'll seek him out. We'll ask him. We'll depend on him. We'll lean on him. If we have the spirit of God, our body, our personality, who we are, we will worship him. 
will take all in our person to seek him out, in our psyche to seek him out, to believe him, to trust him. So those are the things that are so important to us. We have three parts. We have a body. That's the shell in which you live. When you die, your body will return to dust. Um, when I was growing up, and this is kind of <laughs> this is kind of off, but when I was growing up, we had a horse, and so we would take our horse and we would ride far into the woods, far into the woods. And I'll just never forget one time we just smelled just a terrible smell, and we just followed it because we thought it's got to be something big. And sure as the world, when we got there, it was a horse that had lost its life, and no one had recovered it. And you know what? It was almost back to dust in places. And I'll just never forget that. I was a young person. I was a kid riding my horse, just probably 10 or 11 years old. But what I remember about that day is I remember that animal was returning to its dust. It was returning back to the ground. That's what happens to the body. The body is the shell that will return back to the ground. But then we have a personality. Who are we? What is our personality? Well, we are a personality of people of faith. We're a personality of person of hope. We're a personality of personal of, of reverence and, re and revering things. We're a personality that has prayer. And we are a personality that worships. But the important thing there is, what do we pray? What do we worship? What do we have faith in? What do we have hope in? And there are only two choices there for our personality. We either have God in our lives or we don't. And so if we have God in our life, we are the righteous living. We are the righteous personality. If we do not have God in our life, we are the wicked personality. We are wicked. We are wicked in the way we behave. We are wicked in the way we think. We are the, we're wicked in the way we do things. We are wicked in our imagination. So. We want to be of God. We want to ask God, Father in heaven, come into our life and create a new me. We can have a new me. We can have a new birth. Um, if a man has a complete body, soul, and spirit, but the nature remains unregenerate until the Holy Spirit enters, enters and takes possession of the spirit and then we are a changed person. We are new. The Bible says, old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. So we can be new in God. We can be new in Christ. We do not have to drag around that old man of wickedness. Those old hopes that we had. Hopes and things that would never come to fruition. No, we can have hopes that will come. Dreams that will bring forth family, good family, good hopes that will carry us to places, great businesses, good financial stability, good emotional status. We can have all of that in God. So we are three parts. One, we're the body. It's the shell in which we live. The Bible says that Jesus wants it to be the temple of God, the temple of God that lives in us. And then we are a soul. We're a personality. We actually dream we have faith we have hope we have reverence we have prayer we have worship and then the third thing is our spirit and the spirit is either of god or the spirit is of the wicked man and we want to have the spirit of god in our life i hope you today have the spirit of god in you if you don't call on the lord today the bible says call on him while he can be found the bible says today is the day of salvation so today, the scripture says, harden not your heart. So don't be hard. Be tender. Be pliable. Be willing to hear God's voice. Call on him today. Draw nigh to him. He'll draw nigh to you. Today is going to be a really pretty day. We're going to have a lot of sunshine. No rain in the forecast in North Florida. Um, if you haven't bought your plants, go now. Go now and get those plants and begin planting them. And... Get yourself a, a harvest that'll grow and be ready for the summer and then, of course, the fall. It'll just be a grand time for you. Have a good day. The scripture helps us see today that we're a body, a soul, and a spirit. Have the spirit of God in you. And if you don't, ask for it.
God, I don't know you. I have no idea how to even approach you, how to even begin. But I'm asking that you would make yourself known to me today. Today, if you do that, things are going to start happening. Do, 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 do. What's going to happen? People are going to drop in your path. They're going to start talking about God. You're going to get a track from here or there. That's what's going to happen if you ask him to come your way. Because the Bible says he will do it. He will come your way if you ask him. So do that today. I hope you have a great day. Make a difference. If you're a Christian, be called a Christian. And let's live up to what, what we... Uh, <laughs> Have a great day and make a difference, everybody.